It's prayer time, and this is the time that we come together with God to lift our joys and our concerns. The prayer list is available on the screens, and we invite you to be in prayer for each and every one of the people who are listed on our prayer list. We also invite you to share your prayer concerns so that we might pray one for another. The altar rail is opening. You are invited to come and to pray together this morning. As we go to God in prayer, we give thanks that our family who's living in Abu Dhabi has made it back to the United States for a couple weeks. The Adams Williams family, we give thanks to God for safe travel. We lift up those who are celebrating birthdays this week, and we pray in advance for our friends at the front door for those whom we will serve uh, on Tuesday of this week. We also invite you to prepare your offering and to know that every gift you give is important, especially during the summer season when people are away and don't necessarily remember to give their offering unto God. Let us go to God in prayer. great God of Zion, the God who woke us up this morning and started us on our way, the Lord who reigns over each and every one of us, God of all people, God of all nations, God of all. We've come to worship and adore you this morning. We've come to praise you, O oh God, for if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. For God, you have been faithful. You have been faithful in the good things, O oh God, and you have been faithful in the difficult things. You have been faithful when things have gone our way and you have been faithful when things have gone awry. You have been faithful when life is easy and you have been faithful when life is difficult. You have been faithful when we are well, oh God, and you have been faithful in the midst of our illness. In all things, oh God, you have been faithful in summer and winter, <laughs> in springtime and harvest. 
when the sun and the moon and the stars in their courses above, when they, they lift up, oh God, you are faithful. So help us, oh God, to join in with all people and all nature to praise you, O oh Lord. Let our default, let our reaction be to praise you, Lord. When we wake up in the morning, let our first word be praise to you, O oh God. When we go to sleep at night, let our last word be praise to you, O oh God. When we want to say words that we ought not say, turn them to praise to you, O oh God. For without you, we would be dust. And without you, oh God, we would be lost. So we can't praise you enough. For you are God and you are God alone. And we give you our thanks and praise. Oh God, as we come to prayer today, we come with heavy burdens and we come with requests, oh God. You already know what we need. You already know our petitions, oh God. So gather them up and be at work in our lives. Do the healing work, oh God. Do the sustaining work, oh God. Do the strengthening work, oh God. Provide, oh God. Help us to see beyond what is right in front of us, oh Lord. Help us to see beyond what is, is, is blinding us, oh God. Help us to see beyond what is obstructing us, oh God. Let us see beyond those things that have us bound up in fear and in anxiety, oh God. And pull us beyond each and every one of these situations so that we can be reminded that you are indeed the light of the world and in you there is no darkness that you can do anything oh God but fail remind us who we are and whose we are remind us that we have no purpose but to worship you oh God to serve you oh God so make us your hands and feet in this world. Make us your instruments who, who ooze love, who ooze lo joy, who ooze the power of your most Holy Spirit, oh God. Help us to be instruments of transformation. Instruments of love instruments who help your people see that abundant life is not just something off there that we will see when we get to you oh God but that we can live abundant life right now by following you so Lord forgive us we pray forgive us when we have not done your will oh God Forgive us when we have broken your law. Forgive us when we have rebelled against your love. And fix the things that we have broken, oh God. Fix them, restore them, and renew us so that we might have an opportunity to try again. Give us a fresh anointing a fresh wind and a fresh fire so that we might do your will. Thank you, O oh God, for teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
As we prepare to receive this offering and for the gift of worship through song, I invite you to give generously this morning. Give um, through Cash App, online giving, text to give, um, through the finance office for special gifts, and then the offering plates that are coming around at this time. Also, don't forget to place your connect cards and your prayer cards in the offering plate or to send us direct messages or emails online. Let us continue in worship. Today we continue our series, The Gospel in Disney Pixar's Luca. And Luca is an excellent movie about a coming of age situation in a little town in Italy where Luca and his friend Alberto push through their fear. Luca and Alberto are sea monsters. They live in the water, and their job is to take care of the things that are in the water and scare those things off from taking over. And yet they discover that when they come on land, if they shake it off, they become little human boys. Human boys who get into things, who have dreams, who want to see a more excellent way in their life. They want more in their life than this. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, who used to be Saul, who used to persecute Christians, who used to kill those people who were called followers of the way, those who professed and believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that Paul had a conversion experience where he shook off what was and took on what was to be and became one of the most prolific teachers of the gospel. Today, we go to 2 Timothy in your Bibles, and 2 Timothy is what we call one of the pastoral letters of Paul. When we read Romans and when we read the letters to the Corinthians and Ephesians, those are the letters to the churches. But when we get down into 2 Timothy, we get down into one-on-one, -on -one, Miss Ruby. Amen. Paul is talking to his congregation member. He has given him a work to do, and he is saying to him, don't forget. So we go to 2 Timothy, the first verse, starting in the fifth verse. Timothy, I remember your genuine faith. For you shared the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. 
And I know that same faith continues strong in you. This is why I remind you to fan into the flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid hands on you. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you are indeed our worthy and our holy God. So Lord, have your way. Speak for your servants are listening and hide this your servant behind that old rugged cross so that everything that is said and everything that is heard comes straight from you, O oh God. This is your servant's prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray, amen. There are two types of fear in this world. One I will call healthy fear. It is the fear that prevents us from being hurt. We learned this fear when we were little kids. Don't put your hand on the stove unless you want it to burn up. Don't stick your fingers in the socket or you'll be electrocuted. Don't run out in the middle of the street before looking left and right or you'll be run over. We look and learn about healthy fear when we are growing up because it provides the bumpers for us in life. You know, like bumpers in the bowling alley when you're learning how to bowl or the cones, those yellow cones when you are learning how to drive. They prevent you from running into the things that can really hurt you. Another type of healthy fear we are taught as the people of God is fear of the Lord. Now, this isn't fear in the way we understand it. We're not to be scared of the Lord, but we are supposed to have a healthy respect and understanding of God's position in our lives. Who is God? Miss Ruby, when I was growing up, the, the ladies in the church, they would say, they would get up, and before they would say anything, they would say, the Lord is the head of my life. Y'all remember that? And what? That's the first thing. The Lord is the head of my life. Understanding position, who's in charge. It's a healthy respect for how our lives are to be ordered. Two types of fear. Healthy fear and then paralyzing fear. This is the fear we learn as we do life. This is the kind of fear that makes us people that turn inward. This is the kind of fear that overwhelms us. This is the kind of fear that stops us from moving from one place to another place, from stop doing something old to start doing something new. It keeps us stuck. It keeps us bound. It keeps us unable to call on God. It keeps us unable to do the will of God in our lives. This is the type of fear that Paul is talking to Timothy about. He's saying, I know they won't get it. I know they might not always understand you. I know that when you tell them about the things of God, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. I know that when you tell them that God said quit this job and start your own company, they're going to look at you like you have five heads. 
I, I, I know that when you tell them that God said, paralyzing fear will keep you from the will of God. So it is your job in your relationship with God to move beyond paralyzing fear. How do we recognize the difference? Fear that keeps us healthy and in line with God is good fear. This is the fear that keeps us alive, right? This is the fear that keeps us paying attention. But anything that paralyzes you from moving forward, anything that seeks to keep you from doing what it is that God has said, any fear that keeps you from loving your neighbor, any fear that makes you think that somebody who is different from you is bad, any fear that keeps you pulling a gun instead of having a conversation. Any fear that keeps you thinking that you're less than. Any fear that keeps you outside of the will of God is paralyzing fear. Anything that seeks to block us from abundant life is not of God. And is not the kind of fear that should rule your life. Sometimes this fear looks like anxiety, panic attacks. Sometimes it looks like depression. Sometimes it looks like anger. Sometimes it looks like illness. Sometimes it looks like bigotry. Sometimes it looks like racism. Sometimes it looks like homophobic, homophobic tendencies. Fear can show up in so many different ways that you have to be able to ask the questions. Is this fear of God? It's quiet in here. Y'all not helping a sister out this morning. So you have to evaluate the consequences. We've made consequence a bad word. And consequence is not a bad word. It has a positive and a negative connotation, but it's not a bad word. Consequence is simply anything that happens because something else happened. In science, we would call it one of Newton's laws of motion. Everything has an equal and opposite reaction, a consequence. So is the consequence, will I die? Is the consequence to my action that I will cause bodily harm? Is the consequence to my action that I will be put out of alignment with God? Will it put me out of alignment with God? Is it against what I know about God? Is it against what I know about God's nature? Is it against what God told me to do in the rule book? It is, it, does it help me not love my neighbor? Does it help me go the opposite way of abundant life? Then it's not worth it. Amen. You have to ask yourself, are the consequences, both good and bad, worth the action? Will it leave you wondering, what if? What would God have done if I had followed and overcome my fear? In Second Timothy, 
Paul is writing to Timothy, he calls his dear son. Paul, Timothy was raised by his mother and his grandmother who were pillars of the church and helped start the, the Christian movement in their communities and built the church in their communities. And Timothy grew up knowing that he was called to be a servant of the Most High God. He grew up knowing that he would leave his home, that he would leave his comfort zone, and that he would have to follow the will of God in his life. The will of God in his life was to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and, and Timothy's having some second thoughts because it's getting a little rough, Mr. Denard. The, the people don't think he's so charming after all. They think he's a pain and they think he's annoying and he's come in their town and he's ruffling up all these things because the people really don't want to hear about this Jesus. And Paul says to him, get over it. Don't be afraid. God sent you for a reason. Do your job. Because if you're going to be paralyzed by fear, you cannot serve the Lord the way the Lord called you to do it. He says, I remember who you are. Do you? I remember what you're made of. Do you? I remember the kind of faith that you were raised with. Do you? Because that same faith, that same strength is within you. You are literally made of strength. You are literally made of love. You are literally made of grace. You are literally made of power. Amen. So why are you afraid? Paul says to young Timothy, he says, so this is why I remind you about who you are. This is why I remind you of the spiritual gifts that God gave you. And remember when I laid hands on you, when I, when I called you by name, when I told you to go, when I told you do not be afraid, remember that I gave you gifts. So use them. And then he says this. For God has not given us. Pay attention here. It doesn't say, for God has not given you. It's not individual. It's not tied to Timothy's gifts. It's not tied to Timothy himself. But God has not given us, the community, each and every one of us. God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity. What would you do if you weren't afraid? What would you do if you were not afraid? Where would you live? What business might you start? What role, what role might you play in somebody else's life? What gift might you give? What might you build? What would you do if you were not afraid? 
Luca and Alberto decided that they would not be afraid. Well, Alberto decided that he wouldn't be afraid. <laughs> and he showed Luca a picture of a Vespa. And the picture of the Vespa says, Vespa is freedom. And Luca is after freedom. He wants out of the ocean. He does not want to be stuck in the bottom of the ocean with his scary uncle who has come to take him because he has scared his mother by going to the surface too many times. But Alberto only has a picture of freedom. Luca, who was raised by his mother and his grandmother. His grandmother is the secret rock star in the movie. She is the one who tells him all about what's out there. His grandmother tells him all about what's beyond his current circumstance. She gives him the map of how to be better and do more than what he's doing right now. So when Luca and Alberto get together and Luca sees the picture of the Vespa, he looks around at all Alberto's treasures and he says, I think you have everything to build one. Hmm. And then they do this. Look, we gotta ride together. If you don't sit on the back and hold on to the front, the whole thing falls apart. Oh, and who's holding the ramp? The turtle. Come on, it's faster than he looks. Oh, okay, here we go. You, uh... You coming? Nope, I can't do it. Never in a million years. Hey, hey, hey. I know your problem. You got a Bruno in your head. A Bruno? Yeah, I get one too sometimes. Alberto, you can't. Alberto, you're gonna die. Alberto, don't put that in your mouth. Luca, it's simple. Don't listen to stupid Bruno. Why is his name Bruno? I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Call him whatever you want. Shut him up. Say, silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Loud. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Silencio Bruno. Can you still hear him? Nope, just you. Good. Now hang on. Andiamo! <laughs> You must find a way to overcome your fear. The first thing to do to overcome your fear is to pray. Did, did you see Luca? He was standing off to the side going. Bah, 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 bah. Pray. God, if this is of you, give me everything I need. God, if this is you calling me, Send me. Lord, if this is your will, I might need a little courage. Lord, if you really want me to do this, make it so I can't do anything else. If you're going to overcome your fear, you must pray and you must tap into that prayer knowing that God has not given you a spirit of fear. And if you're going to overcome your fear, you're going to have to pray and then you're going to have to enlist your team. Who are the people in your life who will tell you the truth even when you don't want to hear it? Did you hear Alberto? You coming? We've done all this work. 
We've gathered up all the scraps. We've put all the pieces together. We've taken the test runs. We know this thing is going to work. Are you coming? If you're going to overcome your fear, Miss Ruby, you're going to have to pray, and you're going to have to enlist your team. And then you're going to have to change your location. This is the hard part for the people of God. We really like where we are. We like our pews. We like our neighborhoods. We like our kitchen tables. We like to be indoors and comfortable. We don't want to be uncomfortable. So this thing is hard. Luca could not get on the Vespa standing where he was standing. Let's go back even further than that. Luca didn't even know there was a thing called a Vespa when he was under the sea, doing what he was supposed to be doing. And as soon as he found out that there was more to life than that, he had to move out from under the sea, come out on land. Y'all saw last week, he had to learn how to walk. He had to shake off the sea monster in him. Then he had to find out that there was a Vespa, that there was more. Then he had to imagine that he could actually build one just because of what he saw. He didn't go to Georgia Tech and get an engineering education. He just knew that he knew that he knew that he had what he needed because God provided for what he needed. They built the thing, they tested the thing, then he moved next to the thing. Oh, I am afraid. All is not well, all is not well. And then his friend said, you coming? And he had to move from his safe place on land and get on the makeshift Vespa and go down the ramp. And then what happened? Opened his eyes. So if we're going to overcome our fear, we have to pray. We have to enlist our team. We have to change our location. We have to move from a place of comfort and out of the place of fear. And then we have to open our eyes so we can see what the other side of fear looks like. How many of us are stuck because we don't know what's on the other side? We don't like uncertainty. We don't like not knowing what's next. We don't like not knowing the destination. We have to know everything. But if you're going to move to the other side of fear, you have to be willing to start moving and then visualize what God is trying to show you on the other side of fear. What does that look like? You have a Bruno. <laughs> Y'all remember last year we did, a, we did the movie that said we don't talk about Bruno? And this summer we're saying Bruno be quiet, right? That Bruno is Alberto's way of saying, you've got a voice in your head that is not the voice of freedom. You have a voice in your head that's going to keep you stuck. You have a voice in your head that is telling you the opposite of what God is, is telling you. You have a voice in your head that is determined to keep you afraid. 
afraid. You have a voice in your head that is determined to keep you stuck and it's on you to make it be quiet. Silencio Bruno. Shh. Silencio Bruno. Shh. Silencio Bruno. All I can hear is I am not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not afraid because God has not given us a spirit of fear. I am not afraid because God said I'll make a way out of no way. I am not afraid. How are you going to overcome fear? Pray, enlist your team, change your location, visualize what the other side of fear looks like, and silence the fear. Did you hear what Lucas said when they fell in the ocean? Did you hear him? He said, well, we didn't die. <laughs> and do you know what happens next? They do it again and again and again until they build up the courage to go and get a real Vespa. So what are you afraid of? What's holding you back? What is stopping you from living the life that God created you for? You know why you're so unhappy? Because you're scared. You know why you're so grumpy? Because you're scared. You know why you're so mean? Because you're scared. You know why you can't stand your neighbors? Because you're scared. You know why you can't move from the old place to the new place? Because you're scared. Silencio Bruno, Silencio Bruno, Silencio Bruno, Silencio Bruno, Silencio Bruno, Silencio Bruno, or I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. For God is giving you power, love, and self-discipline. You are literally made of the stuff that overcomes fear. Literally made of the stuff that overcomes fear. So what's it going to be? What's it going to be? I'm not afraid. All is well. All is well. y'all come on God 
would use you if you were not afraid. How, how could you get unstuck? How could you see things differently? What possibilities might God open up? If you just said, Lord, I tried it my way. <laughs> and now I'm ready to receive this abundant life that you've been talking about. So what's it going to take? I I'm listening, Lord. I I'm ready, Lord. Unleash your angels and escort me into abundant life. This is the invitation today. Release your fear. Pray. Get a team. Declare that you have to move from your old place to your new place. Ask God to show you what's next. And rebuke that fear in the name of Jesus. Speak life. Stop saying, oh, I would do it if. Watch God work in your life. The doors of the church are open and we extend this invitation to Christian faith to say, yes, God, I I've tried it my way, but I know you have a better way. So show me. You're invited to this altar rail to pray. You're invited online to reach out and say, Pastor, I'm ready to move to the next place. Partner me up with somebody who can show me how and walk with me. And if you'd like to join this family of faith, this is the time. There's no better time, no better season. Won't you come? Don't you come? Won't you come? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall The Lord is working and moving, and I pray that you'll stay and add in an attitude of worship as we move forth from this place. Look for God this week. Mm -hmm. Expect God to speak to your hearts and your minds and your souls and maybe irritate you a little bit mm -hmm. so that you have an opportunity to declare, I am not afraid. Amen. Please rise as we receive this benediction this morning. Go forth from this place, but not from the presence of God. 
Go forth from this place declaring, Silencio Bruno, I am not afraid. Go forth in the power, love, and discipline that God has given you to share the gospel, the good news, the love of Jesus as we move into this promise of abundant life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen.